because my marriage broke up, I went back to my mum and dad, who live at number 10, St Augustine's Avenue, and I moved in there when I were a baby in 1956. Uh, my mum and dad, my dad were in the army, my mum got married, and then she went to live with my grandma, and then from there she progressed from Byron Road onto St Augustine's Avenue, and she'd already got my brother, my two brothers and my elder sister, and then there were me. And then she's had two more since then. And your dad's job? My dad's job were like a bricklayer. My mum used to do cleaning or work at Station Hotel and things like that. You know, and they both passed away now and then my brothers had to come out of that house. So he had to be moving to a bungalow. What did your brothers do for a living? Uh, my eldest brother, he were a plasterer. Next brother down, he was like a bricklayer type thing, but they both, they both retired now. My eldest sister, she's retired. Me, I'm still working. I'm a midday supervisor and I'm also a cleaner at the same school I work at. My young sister, our Janet, she's just a housewife. So is my young sister. Oh, my young sister goes to work. All my life I've lived in St Augustine's Chesterfield. As we are at the moment, I mean, I'm quite happy to live in the social housing. Because, I mean, I don't think there's a lot of housing around for younger people anyway to rent off the council. And I don't believe in council selling them off for oh. people to buy. I think the council has to be them people what's waiting on the waiting list. It's a, a good neighbourhood. I like it. Because uh, I've been round here most of my life anyway, and I know most of everybody, you know, and it's quite a good neighbourhood and we can go and, I mean, I, I like, I look after Mrs Alkis next door. So it is a safe neighbourhood, looking out for each other, being a bit uh, aware of your surroundings as well, seeing what any, if anything else is going off on street road like that. That's what I classed as me, safe. Sorry. We've always worked for a living, you know, and we don't see, we don't have to put airs and graces on. We are what we are and that's it. You no, know, I like it here. No, I think if... I'm not coming out here unless I put my feet first. I'm sorry, but no, I like it here. I like living on this street. Turning big money, so it wouldn't, wouldn't be a big house or anything. Uh, so, anyway, went in for this property and we got it, which is near the Chesterfield College, which was the terraced house. You know, fairly big house, like, right, you know, and uh, they're all right until they got all the children and <laughs> it wasn't big enough. Five children we had, and uh, of course, the house wasn't big enough for only two bedrooms. Uh, I did manage to split one bedroom into two. But, you know, could have rampled big enough. But then, of course, as the girls grew old, because we've got one boy and four girls, uh, the room of the girls that had got weren't big enough, you know, because the girls weren't more room than boys. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, then, you know, we couldn't, I was at, it became hard to work then. And uh, there was no chance of getting the mortgage, of course, it'd been hard to work, so we had to put his name down on the councillors. Uh, and what actually happened, we had been on the council list actually before then, and and we got our mortgage through the council because it's a property or a jeep. Uh, to the uh, and the week as we actually signed every all the papers up and moved into the new house, you know, uh, and then the council actually offered us a council house. <laughs> and the powers what be all the the engineering jobs had closed down and and. Uh, you know, we had to come out, you know, we, we couldn't afford to have a mortgage. So we went back on, well, we got in touch with the council because then 
we were actually overcrowded. You know, classes overcrowded, and you know, in the sun, I think we still had to wait a couple of years. I think before we actually got a, offered a council house. You know, and uh, you know, in the before bedrooms, and we moved into that. That were up New Old on Rhodes Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, nice property, and then of course, as the children got old and and married and went their ways, we thought the house was actually too big for us. It now became ill, the wife was ill, we, you know, we were having problems climbing up the stairs, we were having problems in the, on the garden and everything. You know, because we had an heart attack and, and that's what we see up here as well. Uh, you know, and it was, like, it was just a no-go area like so. You know, like I say, we, we put in to exchange for a bungalow. Uh, and that's how we got this one here now. We've been here six years now. And what do you think of it? It's a prefab, it's a wartime yeah, prefab, or just built yeah. just after the war. I mean, they have just done the outside of these up, but this inside is still all a wooden uh, wooden frame and that, and they did, I think they'd have been probably better off brick, knocking them down and bricking them up. <laughs> you know, like, that's my honest opinion, because it should have been knocked down by now. What would you have done if there'd been no house council houses? How would you have managed them? Do you think, looking back over your marriage, would you have ever had the kind of money that would have bought you a nice little semi at New Bold or something like well, that? Well, no, because you know, it, when when I went back to it, you know, when I went back to work, I wasn't sending any money to get on any. All the land uh, than what we'd already got, you know, the house, it would have been stuck in that, really. Uh, you know, like I say, and we were was overcrowded. It was a nice home and everything, but, you know, it just wasn't right. It wasn't right for, you know, to bring the children up in that, because it wasn't big enough. You know, and, and no, I wouldn't have never been in the position to build my own property, because the kind of wages, although, you know, people think, oh, well, you were a welder. And they're all on big money. They're not on, we wasn't on big money. You know, my wages were about sixty pounds a week. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, no, I want to be in a position. I'm sure I want to be in a position trying to bring a family up. The prefabs here yeah. are coming to the end of their lives. They yeah. have to have their life extended a bit. Mm. But what what would your suggestion be to the borough council that they should do with these prefabs? Well, if they haven't got the room to be able to do them all in one go, then I think what should happen is for them, even if they only knock two or three down at a time and move the people out in somewhere else uh, with the option of actually coming back into the bungalow, yeah. you know, when, when they're rebuilt. Yeah. But they should be made out of bricks now. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be, this mess, uh, you know, timber frames and that. And that. The sheds. Well, I mean, I've got sheds in the garden. <laughs> of course, some people would say, well, well you've got, at nothing. least you've got a garden. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas just down the road, yeah, down yeah. further down the Grangewood, mm. there's those great big boxes of flats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how would you feel about if the council said, well, we're going to move you out of the bungalow, mm. but you've got to go off to go in the flat? What would you say about that? Well, if that were the case, you would have to do it. I mean, you've no option. But do I mean, yeah, I prefer to be in a bungalow. Because, yeah, as you say, you have got a bit of garden. You, you know, you go through your own front door. You don't have to go, you know, through a front door and then go, you know. I mean, there's no way I'd be able to get up the stairs anyway, but that was part of the point. Uh, and I would prefer a bungalow. But I still maintain that they could update these bungalows more and possibly even fit a few more in, in the spaces. You know, even with the gardens, you know, that we have got quite reasonable big gardens here. So they could probably get a few more bungalows in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, uh, and I think they do want updating properly. Personally, I don't think that people should be able to buy council houses. Uh, you know, they belong to the council, and if they, you know, because the same as what we are at the moment. Uh, and I think they should be kept that way. Uh, now, I don't, I don't agree that they should have to go, you know, they, you shouldn't be allowed to buy them. That's my, my opinion. And the final question is yeah. you've got five children, four yeah. daughters, one son. Yeah. Tell me about the houses they live in whether they're council houses, or they bought them, mm. if they are buying them, has it been a struggle and all that? Tell me about that. Well, one lives in the bungalow, same as this one, uh, and he, he's actually disabled, he's got a heart condition. And, uh, 
you just go to it. I mean, the, all the girls, I mean, they all own their, well, you know, they bind their own homes. And yeah, and it has been a struggle for them, you know, I mean, the, and both, both sides, you know, both partners, but uh, are having to work to, you know, to keep all this going, you know, because you know, it's, you know, you're not getting enough money to, for one wage to, to, you know, to, to support everything that you want to do in life, really. Uh, and I do believe that, you know, the governments, nearly all of them, uh, I think one of it's right on that, that the working class people have not really, they don't really want the working class people to enjoy all of this. They don't want them to enjoy having a car. Because, you know, they, you know, they, they, I, they seem to think, in my, this is my opinion, that they think they're better than what we are. And they're not really, because we are because they won't be where they are now. And that is the thing about social housing, isn't mm. it? If you're in social housing, do you feel a second-class citizen? Yes, I think you do. Well, I do, yeah. I mean, I try to be my own, my own home. And also you've got something which you could get in your grandchildren when you, when you pass away, you know. Grove at Barrowell when I was about 21, I think. I was married and divorced. I got divorced and then I met my second husband from Barrowhill and he died. We've been married two years, we married in 1978 and he died in 1980. And I had, my daughter was, I had with him was four months old when he died. And, and I say, I've lived here about 40 years, you can say. Mm. Your parents, by the sound of it, were in council houses or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. at, at Duckmanton or, and, and elsewhere too? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So when you were young, in your teens, yeah. thinking about meeting boys and getting married, what were you thinking about where you'd live? Did you th always expect to be in a council house? Yes. Mm -hmm. couldn't, afford a, couldn't afford to buy one. So. Did you put your name down on a list? Well, for a council house, yes. Were you told then how long you might have to wait for a council house? No, I can't remember about that. No, I don't mm -hmm. think there was, no. Mm -hmm. But you, you had a fairly confident expectation yes. that you would get somewhere. Yeah. So you never went into the question of a mortgage? No. Put it, raising a deposit for a, for a, to buy a house? No. Renting was the way it was going to be? Yes. Uh, and it always has been. It always has been, yeah. Mm. So, you and your first marriage, you you were in the council house. Tell me about that house, where that was. Oh, trying to think. <laughs> we went to Incastle, lived it there, and then uh, we split up, and I come back to live with my mum and dad, up Hill Grove, and then. I eventually got this one when they were first building them, so that's how it came about. Because mm -hmm. this is one of what you'd call the new Barrow Hill houses. Yes, it is. Yeah. What can you remember? What year they were built? Mm, I'll tell you, I was the first one in it, so I think I come down in about nineteen, be about nineteen seventy-six, something like that, mm. round about something like that. Because I was the first tenant in here. Yeah. As a matter of interest. What was here before these new houses? They were the old houses. They were like the block houses, I think. I can't remember. Mm. And they, so they demolished something to yeah. make way for these. Yes. But yeah. left left the yeah. other houses. Yes, that's right. And the other houses were put up by Stavely Works, were they not? Oh, I don't know about mm -hmm. that. I couldn't tell mm -hmm. you. And then right at the top of the hill, there's the railway houses, which, which yes. were up there. Yes, yes. And that formed the community of Barrow Hill. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Barrow Hill when you came here. Was it a good place to live? Yes, it was. Why? Uh, I don't know, everybody said friendly, you know what I mean? Everybody sort of spoke to one another and friendly and 
you know, it was, it was nice, but, you know, it's just got different now, different people, and it's still, you know, don't get wrong, it's still nice, but uh, it was better years ago, I think. Although it would have been a mucky place. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the muck. Oh, I can't really explain about the muck, really. Because you were surrounded by all kinds of different works. Oh, yeah, there was. Tell me what, tell me what there was. There was brick works down at the bottom here, and Stavely works, and well, that's about it. And Stavely made iron and steel. Yeah, that's and, it, because my dad worked there. And chemicals, there was yeah. the chemicals works. Yeah. And there were tips as well. Yeah, there was. Uh, and colliery tips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, it must have been a pretty noisy... Oh, it was a bit noisy, but, uh, you mm -hmm. know, not that it bothered, bothered anybody, I suppose. It didn't bother me. <laughs> but mm. but uh, just down here, there were, t there were tips and what have you, and brickworks. Mm -hmm. And then there's canal, and we used to walk on canal and have long walks on there, and, you know, in summertime. By the sound of it, your second husband died quite young. Yeah, I was, you know, I was 16 years older than me. But, but all the same, he was, he was still uh, working. He was 52 when he died. What can I ask what from? Heart attack. Heart attack? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It had been 80, 88. What was his job? He was what sort of work, he did pipes, and you know, they made them a, like a pipe sling, I think they were called at them days. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, and my father worked on state works as well, making pipes. Have you ever thought that if things had been like they are now, cleaner, more fresh air and so on, that he might have lived longer? Well, I, I don't know, because I think he had heart problems before oh, right. I met him. I think he got suffered with, you know, mm. so... So, Barrow Hill has changed. It's mm -hmm. cleaner. Would you agree it is cleaner? It is a bit cleaner, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are more younger people, I guess. Oh, oh yeah, right. lots of lot of young people on here now, yeah. How do you feel about that? Oh, all right, you know, but you've got to find them houses and, mm -hmm. and that's it. But there's, lots, there's lots of houses empty now. Right, so you, you resigned yourself to paying rent all your life. Mm. I won't ask you to look back and say how much you pay year after year, because it must be quite a lot of money. <laughs> and these days rents never go down, they always no. go up. What's your view about paying rent? Well, I'd think I'd rather pay rent than probably buy one, because I wouldn't want to... I don't know, can't be, to be honest. I'd rather just pay rent than... I've never wanted to buy a house, because mm -hmm. I, well, I, we couldn't afford it. So I'd rather, you know, just pay rent on it. So. Well, so from what you're saying, you've got uh, three children, is it? I've got four daughters. Four, four daughters. Do they live in social housing? The daughters at Barrow up to... Barla, they buy in theirs. The daughter lives across the road, or the daughter lives across the road. She's uh, paying rent on hers, and the other daughters are. One lives at Dumonton, I think they they buy in theirs, and the other one renting one out. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you have any views about that? Do you uh, do, do you think it's not better for them to buy, or do you not? You know, mm. you're undecided. I'm undecided. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they want to do. They want to for that choice and mm -hmm. that's what they've done. Mm -hmm. and, so. and I mean do you have a view on rent generally now? If if there is a trend towards running down the number of council houses, social housing, uh, do you think that would be a good thing or a bad thing? I don't, I don't uh, really know to be honest. I'm undecided, I don't. Mm -hmm. But like, like I say I've paid rent all my life so that's it. Mm. Well, just this last thing, I'm going to ask you a daft question. <laughs> Do you go away on holiday? Pardon? Do you go away on holiday? No. You, so you, there's never that feeling for you of, I'm coming back home and I want to be back home. No. You're always at home, are you? Oh, I've just go on day trips and probably for weekends, but that kids say, right, you go abroad. doesn't appeal to me. I don't want to go abroad. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be, if I go on, I'd rather be around here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, yes. Everybody's got their own opinions, but same as say, they say why, why don't you go abroad and why you do this and why? Well, it doesn't appeal to me. Mm -hmm. For one thing, I don't like the hot weather. I don't like I don't mind. I don't like being cold. But I don't like being hot. So you know, I mean, I'd rather if I'm going anywhere, I'd rather be round here. Yeah. But, uh, and, and you're very happy. Mm. Yes.
Yes, yes. You, you look very happy yeah. and, and, uh, and that's really nice to know because Barrow Hill, at the first glance, Barrow Hill looks as though it could be a sad place to live, mm. but you're not sad. No. You're very happy. I'm happy enough, yeah. <laughs> houses and when they regenerated them years and years ago they made them a one bedroom and a three bedroom so it made two houses. Mm. This house I'm in at the moment is not the original house I was born in although I've been here for 26 years in this particular house. I was born in number one Allport Terrace at the top of Barrow Hill. Um, I lived there with my mum and dad and my sister, my older sister, Marie. Um, next door, we lived at number one. Number two was my mum's sister, who still lives there at the moment. Number four was my mum's mum, my grandma. And we, um, we grew up in number one, Allport Terrace. Um, my mum was born and bred on Barrow Hill at number four. She was born at number four, Old Port Terry. My dad originated from um, New Whittington. Although born and bred in New Whittington, he moved to Barrow Hill when he met my mum and got a job on railways. He was a plate layer on sort of as then British Rail. I think he worked there for 43 years down in the roundhouse and on the tracks beyond it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we left Allport Terrace in, this is going back quite a long time now, but we left Allport Terrace, I think I was about 13, and we went into one of the split levels that the refurbished at the time, what well, they, they made at the time. Um, from then on, we had a few years there, then we moved to a flat in Barrowville, which was, if I remember rightly, Six Acton Court. Um, at that point, I was um, seen my first wife as girlfriend as was at the time. We consequently got married and I bought my first house in Barrow Hill, which was number 21, Midland Terrace. We lived there for a few years. Um, family grew. Obviously we'd not got enough bedrooms, so we looked at buying a different house, a bigger house, and this one came on the market. That was 26 years ago bought that, uh, this, sorry. Um, unfortunately that marriage didn't work out and 13 years ago I married my wife as is now and we had another child between us. So all together I've got five children ranging from 10 up to 27 years. Let me just go back to those houses at Allport Terrace. Mm -hmm. Were they railway houses or Stavely Ironworks houses? They were railway houses. So did your family, your parents, did they pay rent or were they... They paid rent. Yeah, but the houses have been built for railway workers yes. by the railway company. I presume it was something like LMS or... That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, and, and so although they were tied cottages, you still paid rent or the parents yes. still paid rent. Yes, they, they were rentable cottages. Mm. 
And it meant that they were never ever really going to move away, or it, to move away from Barra Hill would have meant a fundamental change. They did. If I remember right, and my sister would be able to tell you better, but I've just rung her up, she's, she's busy at the moment. Um, I think at, at, at one point they did give them op the option to buy, but unfortunately, back in those days, my dad weren't on great money. He was struggling. Mm. Obviously, we're bringing a family up. Mm. Um, so that really didn't come to, as an option. Mm. So uh, something else you talked about, Alport Terrace, is mm. that th within the space of four or five houses, there were many members of the family. Mm -hmm. And this is something that has almost totally died out now. It wasn't uncommon, I know, many, many years ago, mm -hmm. for families to stick fairly close together. Uh, I think these days they'd say people are living in each other's pockets, that's but, right, it, but it wasn't right. seen like that then, no, was it? No. Tell, tell me how that worked. What was it like growing up with all your cousins and your aunts and uncle and gr grandparents um, all there? Yeah, at the time it were it were it were nice. Um, shooting from one house to the other, I used to stop at my auntie's um, house at weekends, some some weekends. Um, yeah, we're good. They were good times. They were very close knit. And just going back in the years, if this is 2016, we're talking about the 60s. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was born in 1964. Um, so, yeah, I grew up in the 60s as, as a very small child. Grew up in the 60s. Um, went, quite, went, went through quite a few things in, in, in while well, I've been in Barrowville. Uh, I worked as a miner. I went through miner's strike. Um, always had manual type jobs, iron foundries. So, so yeah, it's... Uh, and let's continue with that theme. If we were to stand at Alport Terrace in those days at the top of the hill mm -hmm. and look, take the 360 degree panorama, describe it for me. Dark, dingy. All these houses used to be jet black because apparently through age and smoke from the steam, steam engines and obviously smoke from the um, brickworks that we've got on in Barrow. So these used to be very different. And then in the valley bottom, the iron works? The iron works, yeah. Chemical works? Chemical works weren't until a bit later on. Um, but yeah, we did have quite a lot of pollution in Barrow. How many collieries could you see from where you lived? Quite a few, I should think. Um, my recollection of actually seeing collieries from Barrowville is very limited because apparently there was a colliery um, in near the quarry, as they say, years ago. Mm -hmm. I can remember seeing headstocks there. Yeah. I can never remember it working. As for the mines where I worked, it, they, they're a couple of miles away, so no, you couldn't right. actually see. Island Colliery? Island Colliery. I worked at Island Colliery. I worked at number two colliery at Markham. Um, when they shut, when they eventually got redundancy from Markham Colliery, from taking home quite a considerable amount of money back in 1993, just to keep my family going, I had to take a job that was £300 a week less than what I was getting from mm. one week to the next. Without being particularly personally political, mm -hmm. tell me how you feel about the decline of those industries. Um, to be honest, looking back, it was were, it were quite shocking. It was it were a frightening experience because nobody knew how you were going to support your family. I'd never been put in that position before. Um, I suppose as luck has it, I've never been out of work. So when I finished it, um, my mining career ended. I ended up doing a job that was completely different and um, a very strange, put in a very strange situation because I, I started working in a, in a nursing home <laughs> as a not as, not as a nurse, but as a um, 
a keeper looking after um, looking after the how do I can put it, mechanical side of things. Yes. Mm -hmm. I did that for nine months. Sort of general handyman. Gen general handyman, yeah, that's, that's what I was mm. trying to do. Uh, mm. I did that for about nine months and then I got back into heavy industry, which was iron foundry work. Did that for 15 years. But not at Stavely? Not at Stavely, no. It was the, the closure of Stavely was, came at about the same time as the closure of the mines, didn't it? Um, it did. It did. I don't think it was far off um, date time, date wise. But I never worked at Stavely Works or Stavely Chemicals. Um, but a lot of people around here did, and, and did. You, people you knew. Let's talk about what it did to the soul of the community at Barrow Hill when this cataclysm happened. Mm -hmm. It, it used to be, when everything was working, when everything was, was open, um, Stavely Works, um, the Roundhouse, the Brickyard, it was a very close-knit community. Everybody knew everybody. You've probably heard of the old cliche where you could leave your doors open and not have to lock them. And that's how it was then. The change that it's made um, it is quite extreme. You've really got to, you don't know anybody on the village anymore. I, I, it's really strange. That's, that's what I miss, the camaraderie of everybody. We don't get that anymore no. at all. To, I know you, would, you wouldn't know this to uh, any, with any degree of accuracy, but what's your sense about the proportion of houses which, like yours, mm -hmm. have passed into private ownership? Um, I, I think when it first came out, I don't think Maggie Thatcher brought it in right to buy. I think it was it, it was a good idea, and I still do think it's a good idea because it's it's that difficult, especially for younger end today, to get on the the property market. It's giving them a chance to 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 make them so to make them better. So yeah, I think I think it's it's a really good, a really good thing. Unfortunately, it wasn't it wasn't something I did because I've never rented. I bought my house straight away from because I was lucky enough to get that kind of cash at the time. A lot of people these days don't have that opportunity, and I think the government at the moment is giving them that opportunity just to get the, the, the feet on the ladder. But what about the quality of this particular estate? It's, I mean, Barrow Hill is. Loosely, it's one estate. It is. Uh, although you've got railway and, uh, houses and ironworks houses, and then these private houses that have been bought after the council and housing association have taken them over, it's it's still an estate. Now, tell me what uh, what you sense. How would you describe Barrow Hill? I, as an outsider, I get a very negative picture. Mm -hmm. How do you react to that? I describe Barrow Hill as it's very difficult actually because I've always lived here I've always lived in Barrow Hill and I like Barrow Hill and the only reason I'm still in Barrow Hill is because I like Barrow Hill now unfortunately over the years what the, what the council's done they've used it really in my view as a dumping ground not just for waste but for unruly people if I could say that, we do get quite a lot of people on the village that, as you can say, are undesirable people that they don't want to put them anywhere else. So over the years, that's that's tend to what's happened. You mean when you were young, when your parents' generation were kind of running things, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have tolerated the kind of behaviour that's taking place now? Um... Probably not, no. No, they wouldn't have liked that. Um, I suppose if, it, if, if the... Um, how can I put it? If the council wanted to do it back in those days, and they were adamant about doing it, they would have done it. But it never happened back in those days. They were all decent people. You had your one. 
but it was it was a really decent village, a nice place to live. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's not so nice. But like I say, I've always lived here. This is all I'm used to. You're about to have a major change in the village. A lot of money is about to be poured into it to change the. We are. The layout, the standards. What do you think of that? Um, up to now, not a lot, to be honest. My view is they've started some work regenerating Barrowell and they've started to make it look worse than what it actually is. We've got a lot of flats in Barrow Hill dotted about and what they've tried to do in their view is to make it look better. In my view they've made it look like a circus. Every different flat is a different colour stairs. I, don't, I just don't understand that and I'm pretty sure my parents back in those days would have had the same view. So at the moment no. Um, also with this gene, uh, regeneration program that's supposed to be happening this year we've had letters from the council regarding what's actually happening to the boundaries of each pe everyone's house. Bearing in mind this is a private house, I own this house, they're wanting to take so much of my land to make it a car park. Obviously I don't want to do that. They've offered money, they've not said how much, but to me I don't care how much money they offer me, they won't get it. Mm. I mean, you can, obviously at the moment you can't see what garden and, and, and how much they're wanting to take, but I could actually show you and you'd be flabbergasted, they just ruined the garden completely. All right. So, no, I'm not very happy about it at the moment, and neither are anyone that you can talk to, anybody you talk to on Barrow Hill. Mm. Mm. They're not happy. What would be your own vision of the best thing to happen to Barrow Hill? The best thing to happen to Barrow Hill would be that the trouble that we've got at the moment, how it was laid out 30 odd whatever years ago it was when the regenerated it at the beginning. There wasn't many cars back in those days so they didn't need as many car parking spaces. That's the biggest problem that we've got on this estate, parking. So that's where I would be looking. Obviously that's part of the regeneration that they're looking to do but it's the other little bits that I don't agree with. Is that, do you think there's a chicken and egg story there? There's a bus turning circle at the bottom of the road, mm -hmm. but there are no buses to turn in the circle. Right. As I presume, I have a picture in my mind of an early morning back in the 50s, 60s, when, or even when you were a young lad, when there'd be a queue of buses going in and out the circle with they miners were. getting on and, and so on. They were. When, when I used to work at um, down the mines, I used to walk top of Barrow Hill end up four lane ends as we call it and wait for an old Booth and Fisher bus to come and pick us up and consequently bring us home and end at the shift. And once that those bus services were lost people had to get a car just to get to work. That's right, or share transport, yeah. that's what we used to and, do. And, and that I think is also multiplied by if you've got two strapping lads in the, fact, in, in the house who work in Sheffield and one works in was at college in Chesterfield, they've got to have cars as well. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, it's just multiplied. Multiplied, and, and the car parking at the moment is it's really hard. It's really shocking. So transport is one of the things that was important to Barrow Hill when it was established and when it was a thriving community. There were other facilities which have gone as well. Tell me about those. Um, we used to have a well. We've still got a, a, a privately owned club. Um, that's declined through years of, I don't know, people losing the jobs, the miners, um, Stavely Works shutting, Brickyard consequently shut. So that's dropped the numbers of people that use that facility to more or less closure. 
I don't know how it stops open, to be honest with you, but that's another thing. But, um, yeah, the, the, there's quite a few things that's... Um, health centre. Health centre, that's shut down. We have to use the one at Staveley or the one at Incasol at the moment. Um, just trying to think what else. Shops. Yeah, we used to have quite a few shops on the village. And in fact, there used to be one joined to this house years and years ago, like a wooden hut. It was a sweet shop and a cobbler's. That's obviously gone. Um, we've got no facilities. We have to rely on other villages around Barrow Hill. So just to finish off then, to recap, your 51 years encapsulate the final rising years, the years of prosperity after years of struggle, mm -hmm. the, the good years when the miners were finally on decent money, yep. and then quite suddenly from about 1991-92 onwards a very steep decline. Yes. Can it, can it be a phoenix? Can it rise again? I think it can, but it depends on the people that's living in the village. It can be put right. It can be good again. But at the moment, we haven't got that kind of person or community to make it happen. There's too many, dare I say, too many young ones that aren't bothered like the older end used to be. Um, for instance, th this is just a, a, a very vague description. When I bought my house up Midland Terrace, and as you can see I like my garden, so I did all my garden nice, and I put patio doors in, and made it look something that you can look at and feel proud of. Consequently everybody on that road did exactly the same, put patio doors in the living room to look out onto the garden, but they never did anything with the garden. <laughs> so, yeah, I found that quite funny, actually. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it, it's going to be difficult to get, but I think it can, but it'd be difficult to get it back somewhere how it used to be. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>